Hello all, uh, and I welcome you all for this wonderful session on fundamental of cybersecurity. In the previous session, we had seen uh, essential terminologies. You had seen many terminologies there. Uh, in this session, uh, we're going to understand something called as CIA triad, uh, which is a very important uh, CIA triad. And some people say that it is element of information security. Well, this whole thing, CIA, it comes in information security. That's why people say it is an it is an element of information security. So this is also an element of cyber security. Uh, sorry, information security. I'm so sorry. Uh, <clears throat> information security. Now, sir, what is this CIA? Well, basically, the C stands for confidentiality here. A layman terms. I hope uh, confidentiality. Uh, I may be wrong in my spellings. <coughs> confidentiality, I think it's right. <coughs> then I have I for integrity. So this is integrity. And then uh, for the A, it is availability. Availability. So these three things. It's a triangle, it's a triad, okay, CIA. I can put anywhere here like CIA, like this, like it's, a, it's a triad, okay. The whole information security based on these three things, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Some people are, I mean, they definitely know what do you mean by confidentiality, uh, maybe integrity and availability, but let's understand in a very deep manner so that we can understand. Okay, so the first thing here we need to understand uh, confidentiality. Confidentiality, well, what is this? Well, you see, what confidentiality says, it, it says that only authorized person, okay, only authorized person can access a system or can access the infrastructure or the digital resources of a system. So, the keyword here is the authorized person, only authorized person <coughs> can, can access the system infrastructure or the system resources, system infrastructure or its resources okay this is the definition of confidentiality well sir what uh, is this authorization well you see there is a meaning of authorization and we need to understand it uh, uh, apart apart from authorized here there, there is an unauthorized person so this unauthorized person should not have any access to that data or to that uh, system okay so only authorized person can access that system. This is very important in confidentiality. Sir, can you elaborate in a very detailed manner? So let's understand what do you mean by authorization here. <laughs> so authorization is a very important keyword when we are dealing with, uh, sorry, not uh, authorization, but uh, uh, I mean authorization is also, but before authorization, there is a term called as authentication. So authentication and authorization, these two terms are very relevant with each other, but have a separate meaning. So in confidentiality, these, these two things, one is authentication and one is authorization. Those two things uh, are very important and we, and we need to understand it. So sir, what is authentication? Well, authentication again here, two things, I'm going to clear it out here. Uh, my mouse is not working. Yeah. So now here, so two things here. First is authentication, one is authentication, and one is authorization. I'll tell you what these two terms sitting in confidentiality definition. These two things are very important. So let's uh, first cover this authentication. I mean, okay. So authorization. It is basically a program or a process, okay, which confirms the user identity. Okay, it confirms. Basically, it, it could be a process, but could be a program here. Process or program which confirms, which confirms 
यूजर्स आइडेंटिटी यूजर्स आइडेंटिटी टू इंश्योर दैट द यूजर रियली हु इज हु इज ही क्लेम्स टू बी ओके दैट्स टू इंश्योर सो वी आर चेकिंग दिस आउट टू इंश्योर दैट यूजर रियली is who he claims to be who he claims now you see a simple example is username and password so your login uh, login credential with the help of this login credential you are telling a system that i am who i am claim, claiming to be with the help of this login credential because of these login credential you are saying that i am the authenticate person to use this system let me use this system you are telling them okay so here again in the whiteboard let's understand it so what is authenticate it's a simple thing see if i have a if i have an organization here uh, let me take a pen here if this is an organization campus this is an organization campus let's say any office or something like that and this is the boundary of this the boundary there is a main security gate here there is one more gate here okay this is a main gate this is a main gate the campus gate and this is an entrance gate you know or say entrance gate okay, now you are coming here okay you are coming here you are saying that that uh, i want to access this organization okay the security guard definitely let you enter because uh, i mean you do not need to provide any uh, i mean credential or any uh, thing to secure you just have to inform that i want to access the system so it's something like it's an internet you want to access it right and it is like it's open so you you enter it in the entrance gate now here in the entrance gate the security guard who is sitting over here will ask you something and you are here somewhere it will ask you that please uh, show me the credential to enter into this organization if you have a kind of a credential with you then i will uh, make you enter otherwise i will stop you here okay otherwise you cannot enter so that is the reason okay and that that, that is basically authentication here he is asking you for the credential and you need to show them if you if you will show them the credential like an id card then this security guard will tell you that you can enter so this process from this entrance gate to enter into this organization it is nothing but an authentication because you are telling them that i am this with your credential that i am this and let me enter into the system this is authentication a simple thing so sir authentication uh, do i have any factors on it i mean uh, it's only the username and password that i i can show them no there are many things that you can show them and you can claim that i am who i am claiming okay so there are many things so uh, let me uh, what i can do i can uh, uh, scroll it a little so that i get a space here uh, it's not working or what so it's not going to work so no problem i'll take a new section here and let you uh, explain you what are the authentication fact factors <clears throat> so this will help you in the cyber security whenever you are analyzing the uh, different username and password and authentication uh, you know measures so you will not only get get any uh, username and password but maybe you will get a fingerprint or a biometric sensor or <coughs> or a retinal pattern or or signature or maybe security token or maybe implanted device something like that you, you will get many types of factors okay so you do not have to just check username and password but you have to see all these authentication factors in the analyze or uh, or uh, or on the evidence or you or the asset that you had gathered from forensics <coughs> so the first authentication factor here is a knowledge factor okay knowledge factors first authentication factor knowledge factor so sir what is this knowledge factor well it says something user knows okay something user knows and i think it's easy right so what user can know it's nothing but uh, it could be a password it could be a pin passphrase or could be a security question question something like that so <clears throat> something it could be like a password 
Uh, maybe there is a pass phrase. Like pass phrase is something like a whole bunch of letters that you had seen in uh, many of the uh, tokens. Uh, maybe there is a there is a key. Okay, like RSA key or AES key. If you had seen, you will get pass phrases. Okay, pass, long big big long sequence of uh, you know characters. <clears throat> that is pass phrase. Then apart from a, a password and a pass phrase, we also have PIN. Okay, it's a personal identification number. Let me also write it down here, narrow it down. Personal identification <coughs> affication number. Then apart from uh, password, passphrase, PIN, we have a security question, something like what is your nickname? Okay, what is your uh, pet name? So not pet name, but that pet name. What animal do you love or something like that? Okay, so this thing, this information, you know, that's why it is a knowledge factor. Second, second is ownership factor. Oh, I cannot see the mouse actually. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Here, it's an ownership factor. So what is ownership factor? Something user has. Okay, something user has in physical. Something user has maybe logical or physical so what could be the thing so there could be an id card which is in physical maybe a security token so what could be a security token whenever you go up go to a bar or party you get a a, a token from uh, from the you know main main uh, reception area you get a token to enter into the bar or in the party likewise so there is a secure it's a temporary thing okay it's a temporary token that you're getting so security token <coughs> then implanted device this could be implanted device uh, that you had seen in many movies in james ward 007 implanted device will authenticate you okay you you will show the id in your on your hand so it is implanted in your hand so that's ownership factor so you can also find in the in the in the evidence or in the asset that you had gathered that this this kind of authentication is there or not so not only the uh, password and username you need to think about these these things also right uh, why i can't uh, scroll this i mean uh, what is the problem here it's uh, not going down no problem i need to take another section here uh, okay so third the last one the authentication factor the last one is uh, inherence factor <coughs> inherence factor and so what do you mean by inherence factor well something user is user is or does okay it's a it is something like this something user user is or does so what he can do well it's fingerprint you you do that right in your mobile in your laptop a fingerprint there there, there could be a retinal pattern iris scan so retinal pattern uh, maybe a dna uh, sequence could be work uh, signature a unique signature right uh, there could be a voice uh, or there could be a face so these are all the you know authentication factors by which you can authenticate yourself to enter into this organization okay you can show all these things to the security guard here sitting over here that i am this please let me enter into the system or into the organization in our case okay are you getting it i think you are getting it somehow so this is uh, the things and if you go ahead and look after the authentication in a deep manner you will see there are types of authentication so one is single factor two factor multi factor one type password api authentication open authentication there's so many actually okay i and i i mean uh, it's a complete uh, topic on information security which i cannot take it over here uh, there could be a separate video on it i will create it but uh, just uh, for the sake of confidentiality just understand that there is authentication and what kind of authentication there are three types knowledge factor ownership and inherence factor you need to think about all these you know factors and look after your an anal analysis now once you go ahead with the authentication now let's suppose that you are now here in the organization you are sitting over here you see you are said you are entered 
the security guard this guard says yeah you are the part of this organization you can enter into the organization so now you are in organization sir what after this well after this the authentication says there is a term called as authorization authorization what authorization sir it's a basic thing see in organization there are many different chambers okay it's a different chamber so if i take an or, uh, uh, example of a university so university has classroom library uh, maybe uh, like server rooms and principal office or something like that so if let's say this is a library and this is a server room uh, this is a classroom uh, maybe this is a canteen so now if you are enter into the system there should be an authorization which says access control which says now if you are en entered into the system what uh, uh, what you can say what part you can access okay what thing you can access after entering into the organization okay where you exactly you can you know go and where exactly you cannot go so here you can go <coughs> to the library no problem you can go into the canteen no problem you can get into the classroom no problem however you cannot get into the server room it is not authorized to you you are not authorized person to enter into the server room it's a complete restricted room you cannot enter okay without authorization you cannot do it this authorization has something called as access control list access control list what is this list all about sir this authorization this access control list is having names okay names and the access and the access to which they can access i mean if let's say there is a name a uh, tom and tom can access server room no problem he can access let's say there is a name henry he can access to a uh, classroom okay so henry cannot enter into the server room this is not possible for him to go this is not authorized okay the request is going to be rejected there okay drop down there he cannot enter so this is the basic difference between authentication and authorization that you need to think about when you are dealing with confidentiality okay so here <clears throat> in the section 4 we had seen that there is a confidentiality which deals with authentication and authorization so this is the thing so here only authorized person and authenticate person can access the infrastructure or the system or the digital resources or whatsoever they are in the system otherwise he cannot access i think you, you now you get the point here right <clears throat> the second thing so second thing here is maybe this is happening because of this escape character or what i can't see this okay still it is not getting so the next thing is uh, basically it's uh, integrity <clears throat> so what is this integrity well i'll i'll first of all let me uh, show you in the diagram and then uh, we will write down something <clears throat> this whiteboard is really good for me so a new whiteboard <clears throat> and now let's understand what do you mean by integrity it's a simple example i'll tell you so see there is some developer here let's say there is a uh, this pen is not working or what um rainbow color so i'm getting red color now this is good so let's say there is a developer it's a developer developer i think the spelling is right so he is a developer and he develops something. <laughs> Let's say he develop a calculator program. Calculator dot C. Okay, he has written the program in C uh, language. This developer had what he did. What he had, he just upload this whole calculator dot C into the internet. The whole bunch of program into the internet. So this is this is all internet. It's a whole lot of things. So this is uploaded and let's say this developer name is Tom here okay this Tom had uploaded calculator uploaded calc.c this calculator let me write the complete thing calculator d uploaded to the internet now the whole thing is here so let me take another pen and now calculator dot c is here in the internet somewhere in the github or somewhere right now what will happen you see now some attacker will come let me so let's say some attacker will come here 
this is the attacker this attacker is here and let's say he take this calculator dot c in his computer okay for some malicious intent okay he take this he just take this calculator dot c and he just changed he modify he modify calculator dot c okay he modified calculator dot c so now name is calculator d calculator dot c itself but he modified it and re-upload it to the internet okay i'm giving you a very simple example let's say this is an this is a very popular program maybe it's something like uh, uh, adobe photoshop okay so he had just uh, uploaded over the internet he just attacker has just take it okay he just modified the complete uh, adobe photoshop because you know that photoshop is purchased and people are you know just finding the crack or patch or something like that so this attacker had cracked this adobe uh, photoshop and re-uploaded to the internet right now here is an here's a normal user will come so oh, i'm sorry so here a normal user henry will come henry is a normal user a normal internet guy normal internet guy This normal internet guy, what he gonna do? He need this calculator dot c by the way. So he will download this calculator dot c, the same program. He thinks that it is being developed by this famous developer Tom. Okay, so this is downloaded. I hope you are getting the aspects here. Uh, calculator dot c. You just download this. And he will he will try to install in his computer without noticing any modification. He will not see the modification that done by this attacker, malicious malicious thing that he had done on this calculator dot c. He, he just download and install it, okay, without knowing the modification. He install it and whatever the malicious intent that he this attacker had provided in this program it is going to be installed as a payload okay and whatever the malicious intent payload has been installed you know the all access actually it is the this machine is now hacked okay basically from the terms of uh, attacker it is hacked because uh, who knows this what uh, this modification is done by this attacker he had done anything okay he just changed the source code complete source code change you know without any knowing this henry just download and install it in the computer he doesn't know anything about the modification he just install it and now the pc gets hacked and accessed by the attacker so this is a problem here there is no integrity level i cannot check that this calculator c which is there developed by the original developer is the correct thing is the correct version is the correct program that I am downloading, installing, is the same program or not? I, I I cannot, you know, I cannot compare it. There is no integrity level here, right? So this is basically a problem. And this problem is going to be resolved with something called as, I hope you generally people knows about something called as hashing. Okay. We'll talk about hashing. This is basically resolved by a technology. Uh, it's a mechanism actually uh, it's a uh, hashing sir what is hashing let's understand it no problem so hashing now <laughs> okay so it's a saved thing so hashing let's see it what is hashing sir how how i can i how can i uh, resolve this integrity issue well you see hashing is basically when i when i say hashing hashing is uh, it's a process it's a it's a one way function a simple way a one way function it's a one way function it's a mathematic concept what is one way function sir it's a simple thing see hashing is basically uh, there are so many algorithm which supports hashing so famous algorithms are sha uh, 1 and sha uh, 256 and uh, sha 512 and uh, md5 and uh, salt and so many okay these are the famous algorithms supported by the 
hashing and all these algorithms are having this one way function so what is this one way function we'll see it's a simple thing so if i multiply 20 cross cross uh, maybe 27 i do not know what is the result let me just uh, check this out <laughs> what could be the result so um, calculator it's 26 cross 27 so it's a 702 it's a simple it's a hard mathematics here so 702 okay so si simply so hashing will give you 702 okay this this is the result of hash this is a result of hash so it's a why this is one way function because you know that this is a result 702 but no one can know that by which two numbers by which two numbers this 702 comes up they will never understand it they will never know it's a one way function only okay they will never know that what are these two prime numbers or what these are what uh, the two numbers get multiplied and resulted into 702 okay it's a one way function you can go this manner but you cannot go in this manner this is not possible you will never get this result it could be any number which had you know which had a result into 702 you will never get these two numbers this is not possible for anyone to do it it's a one way function so it can crack or not it can crack but it's very very hard it's really very very hard it's a brutal thing to do actually so uh, this is not possible and that's why it is one way function so you, you're getting it so you take any algorithm and uh, you will get this 702 but you will never know that which two numbers so in hashing you generally will get something like this so a b uh, d z e 1 2 5 and so on so random numbers you will get so this random number it's nothing but this is 702 but you will never know which you know which are which are the inputs by which these numbers get generated you will never know the input here okay so you will never know the input you will only get the output so you will never know the output uh, input this is not possible so so that's why it's a one-way function and we will use this string this whole you know character uh, that is here to compare uh, these two programs that we had seen earlier it's here in the in our in our case i think it's uh, i think it's this file so we can compare now these uh, uploaded and download program with the help of something called as hash and that's why we we we're gonna use this so how are they gonna compare it's simple thing see again uh, i'm gonna no no i'm not gonna uh, go ahead and so what i can do is i will i will just remove it a little bit i'll remove this as well so how this hash is going to helpful uh, just a second give me some time to just remove this okay now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna explain you how this is explained. So when this developer developing this calculator.c and when he's trying to upload this to the internet, what he can do? He can add something called as hash here. The hash that we had seen, it's a long sequence of characters, he will add it. And now it is uploaded to the uh, internet. So it's not a single program now. There is an append of hash here. Okay. So now whenever, you know, whenever this attacker takes this calculator.c, uh, somehow if we modify it and re-upload it to the thing, but this hash is never going to change. It's going to be the same, right? It's never going to change. And now Henry get download this calculator.c. He is not downloading only a single program. He is downloading a hash here. So he will calculate this hash at his end and he will compare the hashes now the hash here at the sender side and the hash here at the receiver side if both hashes are equal then there is no modification done on the calculator.c it's a legitimate program that i had download here okay it's a legitimate program but somehow this hash and this hash is not equal then there is some problem in the uh, in the in this program someone had done modification it's not a legitimate program it's not a program that is developed by Tom. Someone had changed in between. Okay, so with the help of hash, you can do it. So uh, cybersecurity generally works on this. So if uh, let me connect to the internet actually, and I'll tell you uh, the several examples. So if you see here, uh, 
uh, yeah, it's connected. So if you if you go ahead and see the Kali Linux, it's a Linux operating system, which is the best example I can show you. Uh, if you download this Linux operating system, you go to the download page here, then uh, you see that you see there is the exe file. This is the program. There is a hash function, the whole hash function. Okay. Now, when you when you download it, you see this hash function. When you download it on your computer, you need to calculate again the hash. If this hash and your hash is same, then this Kali Linux is okay. If your hash and this hash is not equal, then this Kali Linux is not a legitimate program. Okay. So this is the thing that generally people do. So I hope uh, you can um, understand somehow. Uh, I can give you a nice example here. So if I have a, I think I have a program hash kel c hash kels uh, sorry yeah i have a hash kel so uh, let me work on it so uh, let's say uh, let's say i will create a file here uh, new and then uh, this is the file uh, so maybe this is a test file and in this test file if i write hello uh, everyone uh, will you please uh, subscribe to my channel so this is I'm writing and I'm saving it. Okay, so this is the thing. Let me remove this thing. Hello, everyone. Will you please subscribe my, to my channel? This is the string. And now this is the test file. And I have a program hash Kelsey. I'm, I have a file here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna browse that file here from the desktop. Uh, desktop having a file test. This is the test.txt. I'm gonna open it, and you will see that it will calculate the thing. So this is the calculation md5 is this so let's me let me take this md5 here okay this algorithm let me take so this is the string here okay this is the whole character that i was saying so md5 will calculate the hash okay so i'm taking this hash in a different notepad so i have a test.txt and having some text here okay uh, which gives me this md5 hash okay now uh, sorry now what i'm going to do I'm gonna open this. I think uh, I pasted. Sorry, I think I pasted wrong. So this is it. Now I'm again opening this test.txt, and let's say I will change a very small change. I'm gonna do. Hello everyone. After hello everyone, I'm gonna put an exclamation mark here. You see, simple exclamation. One only one character I'm putting here, and I'm saving it. Okay, and then I'm gonna again calculate this. I'm going to open the test.txt again one more time test.txt and again I'm going to calculate it. You see again I'm getting some hash here and if you compare the modified .txt it's the same file okay but I had just put an exclamation these two hashes if you if you see here these two hashes completely different even a single change you do the hashes are going to be different so in that way i can compare that this is a legitimate file and this is not a legitimate file so that's why we use hashing in cyber security i hope uh, you understand the meaning of the thing so uh, here i can simply write only authorized person a person can modify the data can modify the data so this is the thing uh, this is integrity now the last part is basically an availability i am so sorry i had taken too much of time to make you explain this thing uh, it's really annoying to you i understand but let's understand availability well, you see, availability is a very simple thing well it is it deals with the 24 cross 7 uh, the availability of the service because many organizations so let's say uh, i have a i have a google okay google.com so google.com says that i'm giving a service 24 cross 7 and i'm gonna I'm, i will always give you that service 24 cross 7 if somehow some problem occurs on that google server or uh, to its company or something like that some problem happens and if he, if he cannot give you the service on the time then this issue will come up availability issue okay so if an author an, if an authorized person cannot get the data due to general network failure or some attack then that is the problem 
okay as long as the business is concerned i guess so the organization uh, the what you can say the main goal of any organization is to give service 24 cross 7 okay this is the meaning of availability so i hope uh, you understand it so uh, thank you for listening to me if you have uh, any doubt you can ask me in the comment section so we had seen uh, in this session the confidentiality uh, inside that we had seen authorization and authentication here and after that uh, we had seen by the way we are dealing with cia triad okay we had also seen the authentication factors knowledge factors ownership factors and inherent factor here this is the thing and then at last we had seen uh, uh, the integrity and we had seen all these diagrams here about integrity and hashing tutorial we had seen we had also seen the availability okay so this is the thing and if you like it please uh, uh, hit that like button and share this video to all your friends and thank you for helping me if you are new here uh, please uh, uh, subscribe subscribe to my channel thank you so much for listening to me